One. Two days ago, I go to the supermarket to buy some things I need for the week. When I'd finished, I realized that I still had an hour left for my mom to come back from work, and I didn't bring keys. So I decided to visit my friends in the office supply store, which was in front of the supermarket. I come, leave my things in the client lockers, and my friends see me arrive. Immediately, they summon a meeting in the furniture section, our favorite place to slack off. Where we cut up for almost half an hour, the store was almost empty. With this pandemic, there's not much demand for office things, also Sundays are the slowest days of the week. Suddenly, a wild client arrives in the furniture section, a Karen. She sees us and immediately, Nobody works here or what? I react from mere instinct and answer her, Sorry ma'am, how can I help you? I need this desk right now, I have no time. Something important to note is this store has a labeling system. Every furniture has a yellow label, every label represents the amount of pieces in this unit. The desk that the Karen wants doesn't have a yellow label. Sorry, but we have no more of this desk model, only the exhibition one. But we can't give it to you. If you want, I can check for others in the store. In my city, there are only two of this store, and the employees can check stock between stores. She explodes for some reason and says, You lazy little boy, you didn't even check in the out storage. Simply, you are incompetent. I want this desk, and I have no time to lose. Just go to the fucking storage and give it to me. When I turned my head to see my friends, they'd left me, but... Suddenly, I realized of a very important thing. I don't get paid to take this shit. So I turn to the Karen and say, Well, ma'am, I could go to storage, only to see that we don't actually have this desk. Karen turns red and was about to scream, when a guy with a hydraulic skate arrives. The green skate is only for furniture, so this may be the furniture guy. He sees how Karen was about to yell at me. I've never seen him, but I refer to him and say, Hey, Ramon. For Ramon, his name was not Ramon. I don't have any idea what it was. And he says, what? Run to storage and make a circle ticket. A circle ticket is paper with all the information of one item, of this desk model. 172865. Write it down, dude. So I give the SKU number and all that jazz. If the system asks for the number of ship, ask Fred for the number. Ramon goes to the storage without any idea of what's going on. You see, damn lazy, it wasn't hard, but you simply do not understand reasons. So I sent this poor boy to the storage just for him to come back saying that we didn't have any of this one. Are you happy now, ma'am? How dare you? Maybe I go to the other franchise to buy the same desk. Really? And you promise not to return? At this time, Ramon comes back and says, Oh, we don't have any of this desk in store, but if you want... You little bastard, I want to see the manager. I will get you fired. She said it. She said the thing. With the most indifferent face I could muster, I say to Ramon, Please, Ramon, go get him. Ramon goes and gets the manager, without any idea what's going on again. Luckily, a manager was near, so he wasn't long in coming. Greetings, how can I help you, lady? I want this stupid boy fired. So the manager sees me, personing the expression of WTF. Sorry, but he doesn't work here, lady. Of course he works here. He told me there was no desk just by seeing it. That's right, I said it, but this woman simply didn't understand reasons. Karen filled her anger meter, but instead of making a big problem, she only left the store while yelling and cursing. 2. So I started a retail job at a store that had just opened up in my city a couple of months ago. And I've been waiting for the day to finally tell the fun tale. I have had a couple of run-ins with low-key Karens, for instance, on the store's opening day, I had a Karen ask me where the business shirts are. I showed her, and she said she wanted a three-pack of business shirts. I apologized and said that we didn't have three packs of business shirts, and she huffed and said, You work here, and you don't know where anything is. Before walking off. Eh, yeah. It's everyone's first day. Of course we're not going to know everything. Ah. But I digress. The story that this post is referring to just happened on my shift and that I just got off a couple hours before writing the post. For this story to make sense, our store has these push-to-talk devices. I'm unsure how many other retail stores do this, but I'm guessing it's commonplace. Basically, walkie-talkies that are fed through an earpiece. The first encounter of the day happened about 45 minutes into my shift. I hear over the radio from a co-worker. A uh, customer just came up to me saying they saw someone shoplifting and that they're still in the store. 
This obviously got my attention, since working the checkouts, there isn't a lot of insane action that goes on other than the odd peak time here and there. I then hear the manager ask for the description of the culprits and what they were stealing. A bald man with a hat and a green jacket with a partner was stealing kitchen knives by replacing the new ones in boxes on the shelves with crap ones. My interest is piqued even more when they said that they had spotted the culprits, and then I hear over the radio, Okay, call security and make sure you check their bags before they leave. While this is happening, I'm fixing up a click and collect order for another customer. And when I come back out to the registers and hand the customer their items, there's two security guards and all the managers double checking everything they were buying. They ended up being let go. So my guess is that they realized they were caught trying to steal and decided to bail on that idea and just buy the items instead. And I thought that was the end of the excitement for the night. Then it happened again. Not even an hour after the first event, I'm back at the registers and I hear the manager come on the radio and say, Hi everyone in level 1, I would like you to keep an eye on a young blonde woman. She's wearing a grey jumper and is acting really dodgy, just a heads up. Me and my co-workers at the checkouts all give each other a look, wondering what's going on. Then about five minutes later we hear, Definitely keep an eye out for her, she's definitely stealing stuff. At this point, I'm kind of chuckling, because again, this is quite a lot of excitement for someone who stands behind a register for a good majority of the shift. We then hear, She's heading to the elevators. Can someone on the ground floor by the back exit just stand by the elevator near men's? We just want to have a good idea where she is. And as this is being said, I see a manager running towards the set of escalators in the store. And the radio chatter continues. She's heading towards the beauty section. Can we get someone over there? Did someone call security? Security went home because they were sick. Of course they did. Make sure she doesn't get near the exits. She just got on the elevator. I'm keeping watch by the elevator, kind of looking around, not really sure what to do at this point. Just kind of thinking, what the fuck is going on? Only to then hear over the radio, she's gone into the basement. Which made me chuckle again because the basement level hasn't been finished in our story yet. And is obviously a dead end. The rest of what happened was told to me by the manager who caught her. He chased her into the basement, and into a corner where he started taking pictures of her. I'm guessing for the police so they know her appearance. And she immediately started freaking out and crying. After this she yelled, I've got nothing left to lose, and charged at the manager, which obviously got him to back off real fast, and she then managed to get out of the store empty-handed. We scanned all the goods she had picked up and determined that she nearly stole $250 worth of goods, including a small TV monitor, Lego sets, clothes, etc. In the end, we kind of all came to the conclusion that it was likely a junkie trying to steal stuff from our store so she could sell it on Facebook Marketplace or eBay to make a quick buck. The next half hour over the radio was just them describing the security camera footage, like the moment she realized she was caught, how desperately she was trying to get away, how funny it was seeing the managers chasing her around, so on. Part of me wants to feel bad for the thief because it definitely sounded like she was in a really rough place, what with how the manager described her reaction to getting caught stealing so much. But at the same time, I can't help but feel like she was going to sell that stuff and get another hit of ice or something. But I guess the thing I got out of this was that there are quite a lot of eyes on you in retail stores, even if it may not seem like it. Anyway, just thought I'd share that experience with you guys. It was quite an exciting night for me. 3. I was a department manager at an arts and crafts store a few years ago. I have some gnarly PTSD scars from that, but this clown takes the cake for me. A warm pre-pandemic Saturday morning in May of 2018. I got called up by the cashier who was known to be very soft-spoken. All the registers are busy. Holding up register 3 is a middle-aged lady with two carts chock full of crafts and baking stuff. The issue was the customer's 10% off coupon was expired over a week, and it was not working. Her total was around $557. The lady was already irate, berating the cashier, an 18-year-old, saying she can't believe coupons expired so soon after getting them in the paper, having about how she was a rewards member who shops there often since she was a Girl Scout leader and how I should contact the newspaper she got the coupon from and make them either deliver it to her sooner or let corporate know the coupon should last for up to one month. 
I de-escalated the situation and apologized while explaining that I couldn't make corporate stop running different sales every week, but I would certainly manually take off the 10% myself. As I was doing this, I noticed she would save money with the paid membership we had recently implemented. With this membership, the customer would get a one-time 20% off their current order and 5% off every purchase thereafter. Sad clown honk. Yes, it was a ripoff, considering it offered almost exactly the same exact rewards that the free program offered. But seeing this lady had a huge order, I pointed out that not only would she get the membership essentially free, but it would save her $71. $20 more than she would have saved with her expired coupon. The woman jumps down my throat. First, they try to tell me about this dumb membership, and now you? Do I look stupid? I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm not a moron. I know there's a catch. Get me another manager. You're not going to trick me into paying for something more. Do I look stupid? You're insulting my intelligence. I'm tired of seeing your face. Get someone else up here now. By then, I had already taken the 10% off, called another manager, even apologized despite fuming, and she was still ranting. My fellow manager on duty came up. I stayed because I wanted the sweet glory of seeing this lady's face when she was told the exact same thing I had just told her. This sent the lady into another frenzy. We got the district manager on the line, who had literally left minutes before the interaction started, from a meeting where he commanded me on being the best salesperson of this membership in the district. Ah. And he had to explain to her the same policy, that every employee was required by the company to offer this membership, and we were not trying to rip her off. But we apologized for the inconvenience. She still did not leave. Eventually, I asked her what she wanted. What is it that she wanted out of this interaction that, by now, had caused a whole scene and had taken up over half an hour? She demanded a $100 gift card, not to the store, but a $100 Visa gift card for wasting her time. Uh, how about no? We couldn't do that, of course. She ended up leaving, with the promise that the district manager and general manager of the store would call her. I ended up taking a 40-minute paid break in my car to release steam after that. When the district manager called her a week later to offer her a $10 certificate to the store, she told him to hold on a second, and we could all hear her in another store throwing the same kind of fit. Ridiculous. I'd be surprised if her butthole wasn't completely blown out by all that screaming she does. Lunatic. 4. Background I work in security, so uniform is black pants, black boots, think construction steel caps, light blue shirt, tie, very dark blue, borderline black jersey, and a high-vis jacket with removable sleeves and hood, which I tend to not have attached, so it looks more like a vest, and a beanie or a cap. Company logo and name is all over the upper body of the uniform pieces. While traveling to and from work, I tend to have my over-ear headphones on with my music pretty loud. I work four days on, four days off, 12-hour shift overnight, and spend one and a half to two hours traveling each way. So I get very little sleep during my work week. Meaning by the end of it, I'm a walking zombie on my way to work, and don't normally wake up properly till I've had my cup of tea when I get to the site. Super Marcus uniform is black pants, black shoes, and a black with red highlights polo, with store logo in the normal overbreast pocket location. What happened? So I'm on my way into work earlier tonight, going through the supermarket at the city's train station. While I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to have for lunch, or what I'm going to have with my dinner, when my headphones got pretty much ripped from my head. As I turn to find out what the hell is going on and to get my headphones back, a guy wearing the store uniform starts talking at me in a loud voice, about half a step down from yelling. What are you doing? We don't pay you to stand around in the store listening to music. You're meant to be out back to counting the pallets. They aren't going to unpack themselves. I was rather annoyed about my headphones being removed, but after he finished, I'm guessing I just had the biggest WTF look in my face. Because he just stares at me for about ten seconds and then said, We'll get moving. You can get this back when you finish your shift. I think that's when he saw the company's logo on my beanie. Because he just started spluttering and said, Oh shit, you don't work for us. I just made an ass of myself. Sorry, mate. Uh, while holding my headphones out to me. I grabbed them back, told him, No, I don't work here. And I bloody hope that's not how you normally treat your employees. Again, he was constantly saying he was sorry, that it had been a rough day. And something about some of his workers skiving off and the stockroom getting behind. 
Honestly, I zoned out as it was none of my business and I didn't really care. I had only been awake for a few hours at this point, and was on my way to my last shift of the week, so was pretty much only half with it. By now, people have noticed the encounter, and the store's hired security comes over. He works for a different company, but this guy is one of the guys I chat with almost daily on my way into work. So he walks up to me and says, Hey Gus, bro, you all good? I replied, yeah mate, worker dude here just mistook me for one of his storemen. Snatched my headphones from my head and not quite yelled at me before realizing his mistake. Someone might want to get him a coffee, as it looks like I'm not the only one that needs a pick-me-up. Turns out the employee was the closing shift supervisor, so pretty much the highest up the totem pole manager on site at that time of night. And he went beetroot red when I said this. I started trying to apologize again. I told him, it's all good bro, no harm, no foul. My headphones aren't broken. The only injuries are to egos but I would refrain from snatching things off people's heads in the future. Me and the other guard had a chuckle, and the supervisor even saw the humor and joined us in our chuckle. Guard heads back to his post, saying he will catch me later, as he knows he isn't needed. I say to the supervisor, I hope you can find your missing workers and catch up on the decanting. He said thanks, and I thought, right, back to getting my crap. I finished my shopping and walked towards the checkouts, with my plain roll to have my goulash, my energy drink, milk for my cups of tea, and some sugary crap to snack on. Get to the checkouts, and the supervisor is standing behind the man Tills, sees me get to the front of the line, and waves me over. I walk up, place my items on the bench, say hello, and ask him if he found his worker. He responded, saying he had. They were outside smoking, but were taking their break, so they were allowed, but they forgot to tell him. Oops. He rings up my items, I swipe my membership card. Not that it gives me much, as I don't spend enough. But sometimes you get discounts on items with it you wouldn't otherwise get, and go to pull out my Aftpost card. He sees this, and says, Put that away, mate. This is on the house. It's the least I can do after what I did to you. I told him he didn't have to, but if he wanted, I wasn't going to say no. And he said he wanted to, as I could have made the whole thing a lot worse for him, but didn't. I thanked him, collected my items, wished him an easy rest of shift. When he said thanks and wished me the same, I went on my way. Not working somewhere saved me about $18, 12 to 13 USD. Almost wish I'd grabbed more, but didn't know it was going to be free. Oh well. 5. This story belongs to my beautiful wife, who is a deli manager in a major regional grocery store in our area. This literally just happened yesterday. As usual, beautiful wife and I were decompressing our day's events before going to bed. And I reminded her of how upset she had been in the afternoon when we spoke on the phone, and asked her what happened. She was in her deli, trying to scan some products to get her order in by deadline, so the deli would not run out of the needed products over the long weekend. An entitled man was next in line, and seeing my wife apparently not occupied, immediately latched onto her like a barnacle. She held up one finger in a motion to wait, and said that one of the others would be right with him. She's in the middle of something important. This was apparently the worst thing she could have said or done. Don't shesh me with a finger. I'm the customer. You're doing nothing. Serve me. Beautiful wife really didn't have time for this and ignored him as she continued to build her order. This, of course, switched on full-blown toddler mode. And the entitled man got really nasty. He threatened her job. He questioned her morals. He mocked her in every way possible. His language slid well past any kind of proper workplace decorum, and the name-calling began to fly. Try as she might, it was too distracting. He won. Beautiful wife failed to get the rest of the order in on time. Having arrived at that point of no return, she turned and looked at the entitled man and said, I'm now available. However, you will not be served, not by any of us. Learn to treat others with respect, and maybe we will help you another day and she started helping the next in line. Well, that's not fair. Where's the manager? One of her workers turned and said to him, She's the manager. It was deer in the headlights for a moment of blissful silence, and then the wailing started again. But after it became clear that they were no longer going to acknowledge his existence, and would not help him even after there was no one else left to serve, he left in a huff. She will likely get a complaint from him, Try as she might, beautiful wife tried not to let it get to her, but it did. It left her in a dark space. She refuses to tell me exactly what he said, 
but it affected her despite her best efforts to act like it didn't. And she didn't get the full order in on time. It was some time around here that we spoke briefly on the phone, and I could tell she was having a bad day, but she refused to talk to me about it then. Later in the afternoon, she is restocking a shelf when a gentleman she doesn't recognize approaches her and asks if she is a beautiful wife. I am, do I know you? No, but last week my wife needed a couple of large sandwiches at the last moment and couldn't order 24 hours before like she was supposed to. And you helped her and got her squared away in time. And they were so good! She immediately knew who he was talking about. It had been the only big sandwich order of the week. Oh yes, I remember. You have such a sweet and delightful wife, sir. I was so happy we were able to help her. You have no idea, but thank you. His wife, the sweet customer, then joined them, giving beautiful wife a warm greeting. Now put your hands in front of you and close your eyes. She did as requested, and the sweet customer put something in her hands. Now open them. Beautiful wife looked at what was in her hands. It was a small hand-decorated mason jar filled with chocolates. I just wanted to thank you for helping us out of a last-minute pinch. He didn't have to do anything. I was happy I could help. You did everything. Now just say yes. Of course, sweet customer won, and beautiful wife kept the chocolates. She worked until 10 p.m. last night, and dare I say the chocolates didn't make it home. Hey everybody, Hal Freezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Adventures in Fast Food and Retail, episode 139. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use and sent in stories for use in this video. If you enjoyed the video, then please do like and subscribe. Comments are also appreciated. It's like a cherry on top of a cake. Unless you don't like cherries, in which case it's like those little jelly tot things you get sometimes. Or maybe a chocolate button, or, or maybe another cake on top of the cake. Pretty good anyway. Right, where are we? What day is it? It is Wednesday. This video is a bit later than I meant, but, uh, oh well. Um, I did have something to say, I can't remember what. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm a silly hell freezer. You may have heard me mention in the bloopers video I put out uh, the other day that I needed to buy a Santa hat, and I did. And a very quickly, I thought, okay, I need a purple one. I, went, I thought, right, perfect, that's it. And I ordered it, and I arrived, and I thought, that looks like it's blue. And it was blue. I went, okay, I went back, to the, I went back again. I thought, I'll check, it's my mistake first. And uh, it was my mistake. So I go look at the picture, got off Amazon, sell it on Amazon. And it looks purple in the picture, but it does actually state that it's blue. And I usually would check that sort of thing, but I, I ordered this in a bit of a rush the other day. And now I have a blue hat that I have no use for. A blue Santa hat. I'll try and get a purple one before Christmas Day, if I, if I can. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Right, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening. And take very good care of yourselves.